regardless of the BCS, Miami is climbing with wins over Florida State and Virginia Tech in the polls. Number two, today another primary. Pittsburgh is dangerous with big play capability. Ken Dorsey and Miami are back. The swagger has returned. And in the eye of the Hurricanes, the ultimate prize. The Orange Bowl in Miami. The Panthers of Pitts at five and three. The number two Miami Hurricanes. Number two, that is, in the polls. In the BCS standings, Miami trails Florida State despite having beaten Florida State earlier this year. Hi, everyone. I'm Rich Waltz, and welcome to the Orange Bowl. If you think presidential voters in this state are confused, football fans are as well, especially in this city. They feel that they've won the popular vote and they should be in the electoral college. We call the BCS the number two team in the country. The Orange Bowl in Miami, home of the Hurricanes, number two in the country right now against Pittsburgh. Butch Davis has taken this program from the depths of NCAA sanctions to the number two spot in the country. And they're on quite a roll right now at seven and one. Walt Harris is trying to rebuild the program at Pittsburgh. And this year he's at five and three. These next two weeks crucial to this Pittsburgh program at two and two in the Big East. And against Miami, he's one and two. It's not one down here in Florida. The weather was a concern for Pittsburgh. And Don McPherson, 75 degrees and a, and a slight breeze, but the humidity is not that bad. I think that's a break for the Panthers. Yeah, just walking around on the field a moment ago, Rich, it was nice and calm down there. The wind is picking up just a little bit, making it very comfortable. Pittsburgh won the toss, deferred. Miami will receive. We are underway. Dell Jones. And Jones is out to the 22 yard line. Miami takes over. Ken Dorsey, as a starter, he is 10 and 1. And he's averaging 46 points a game as a starter. His offense is, is quite a powerful tool right now. We told you about some of the weapons in, in Santana Moss. But on the other side, Reggie Wayne is a quality wide receiver. He's an all Big East quality receiver. And he's more of a possession type receiver. He's a smart guy and he holds the record for number of starts for a receiver here. James Jackson behind Najee Davenport. And it's Jackson who stumbles to the 23 yard line. Mike White made the stop for Pittsburgh. Walt Harris couldn't stop talking about these two offensive tackles, McKinney and Gonzalez. He loves these guys. Yeah, and these both of these guys did an outstanding job against Virginia Tech. The quality offensive line here give Dorsey plenty of time. And they must watch Brian Knight, one of the best pass rushers in the country, nine and a half sacks this year. And he's a guy who knows how to come off the edge real strong, so they'll keep an eye on him. Pittsburgh must get pressure on Dorsey. Moss in motion. Jackson the carry. And he stopped at the 24 yard line. The Pittsburgh defense is ranked third in the Big East. They have three quality linebackers, not a senior among them. Amir Purifoy in the middle. Beinecke gets the start and Gerald Hayes on the outside. This is the question mark for Pittsburgh. Their secondary and especially their corner. Shantae Spencer is a freshman. Sean Robinson a sophomore. That's not good when you're going against Miami. No it's not good and they're not as fast as those Miami receivers so they have a huge task today. Miami faced with third down and seven. Here comes a blitz. Dorsey completes it. It's caught out to midfield. The sliding Reggie Wayne with a first down. And Rich, this is the speed factor that we talk about with these Miami wide receivers. These guys are just explosive off the ball. One on one on Spencer, giving him plenty of room 
And just, a, I tell you what, Spencer doesn't make that tackle. Wayne's off to the race. It's a touchdown. There was no help over the middle. Pittsburgh blitzing. And in, in talking to Paul Rhodes, their defensive coordinator, he said, boy, if you blitz Miami, you can get hurt. And there's proof. Jackson getting outside. And Jackson's inside the 40, down to the 38-yard line. Corey Humphreys made the stop. 15 yards on the carry for James Jackson, who last week against Virginia Tech went for 145 yards. And they have some very, you know, we talk about the receivers and the speed of the receivers, but these running backs, Davenport and Jackson both, and then Portis, if he gets a shot today, are all outstanding and very fast on the corners. First drive of the ball game, number two, Miami on the move. That one is dropped. Daryl Jones was the intended receiver. And it's incomplete. A low throw. Ken Dorsey doesn't miss much, though. He's 57%. He really, I mean, he's a sophomore. People think he's been here longer than he was. He, he was a redshirt freshman last year, or a, a true freshman last year. He's really a, a redshirt freshman in terms of, of age right now. And Butch Davis says he doesn't play at all like a freshman or a redshirt freshman. He's very poised. This is start number 12 for Dorsey in his career. Jackson to the 36. Brian Beinecke made the stop. It was a disappointing loss last week for Pittsburgh against North Carolina. But both Paul Rhodes, the defensive coordinator for the Panthers, and Walt Harris said the defense played very well last week. Third down and nine. Dorsey. Time sets up the screen. Jackson the catch, but a tremendous play to stop Jackson. Gary Urschler, a sophomore out of Pittsburgh, made a tremendous play. That could have been a big game. He stops Jackson at the 38, and it's fourth down. You know, he didn't really have a choice of not following the play action fake. He was getting swallowed up by an offensive tackle and just made a, like you said, an outstanding play just staying with it. Freddie Capshaw, the punter, it's a fake, and Capshaw's going to throw it. And it's deflected and incomplete. So the Hurricanes gamble with a fake punt, and it's broken up. Amir Purifoy got a hand on it, and Pittsburgh takes over. Boy, if Capshaw looked down the field, he had Andre King, a backup wide receiver, going down the middle of the field wide open. He chose to go to Shockey. Right in the middle of the screen. Here's Andre King right here, wide open in the middle of the field. <laughs> they don't give those punters enough time to read coverages. <laughs> John Terman for Pittsburgh swings it out to Lou Polite. And Polite is out to the 43 yard line. A look at Terman now. He's a senior. And he's a good one. In fact, his quarterback rating is quite high, 56%, 16 touchdowns and only three interceptions. And we told you about Antonio Bryant. Well, Latif Grimm is the Panthers equivalent of Reggie Wayne. He's a quality guy. If you spend too much time on Bryant, Grimm will beat you. And Bryant and Grimm make up the best receiving tandem in the nation. And there's a quick throw to Antonio Bryant, who played in this stadium for Northwestern High School here in Miami. The offensive line is a real question mark. Don, last week, six sacks. They've given up 32 this year. That's the worst in the Big East. Miami doesn't have a real big pass rush, but Jamal Green on the edge could have a big day. And with the troubles they had against North Carolina last week, Jamal Green knows he can get to the corner. And a new quarterback, Rod Rutherford, is in the game. And he'll hand it off to his running back, Kevin Barlow, the run. So we see Rod Rutherford, and in comes John Terman. What is this, Donnie, a Minnesota flashback? <laughs> exactly right. It's a lot like what Minnesota does in bringing in 
uh, Abdul Kalika, a mobile guy who not only does he come in and give you an added dimension, but he also makes the defense think, and that's what Walt Harris is doing early. Terman is a classic drop back passer at 6'4, 220. And he's back in the game on second and seven. Terman with time. Over the middle, man open, and he overthrew Latif Grimm. He was wide open. Miami linebackers, the number you should remember. Well, heck, if you watch the game, it'll be burned in your memory uh, bank today. Dan Morgan, number 44. He is a Buckus Award finalist. And the senior is quite a football player. Great secondary on the out. 18 interceptions for the secondary, and Al Blades is their leader. Al Blades brings the Blades legacy back to Miami. Younger brother of Benny Blades, an outstanding All-American free safety. Here's a look at Dan Morgan, the middle linebacker. Hurricane show blitz. Terman, lots of time. Drops. Antonio Bryant, who did not have a good game against Miami last year. And he drops this one. Rich Miami can, excuse me, Pittsburgh cannot afford these kinds of mistakes early. Wide open, Bryant has to pull that ball down. They're not going to get too many of these opportunities as this game goes on. Here's an opportunity with Andy Lee getting set to punt, an opportunity for Miami because Santana Moss is deep and they hit the punter. Flag is down and the ball bounces out of bounds. The question is, is it a five yard, which would not be a first down, or a 15 yard, which is automatically a first down? I think they'll get the 15 yard type because they, two or three guys ran into him. Personal foul, and Jim McConaughey says that's 15 yards, though Butch Davis doth protest. <laughs> I don't know if he said doth. <laughs> Personal foul. Roughing the kicker on the defense. First down. You see why it's why you get the 15 yarder. When you get two or three guys running into him, one, two, three, four guys in the area. They took him out pretty good. Again, Rich, Pittsburgh is getting yet another opportunity. They, they missed Latif Grimm on the on the deep route over the middle, then the drop by Bryant, and now a penalty that gives them more life. They have to take advantage of these mistakes and these opportunities early. Panthers have to be happy with the fact that they've been able to give John Terman time, though, to find those receivers. First and ten at the Miami 32. Terman again with time. Overthrows his man. It's incomplete. Lou Poli. Rather, it was Chris Wilson, the tight end, the intended receiver. Second down and ten. John Terman grew up in Walnut Creek, California, which is the East Bay of the San Francisco Bay Area. He went to junior college at Los Medanos Junior College. And the interesting thing about Terman is he played high school football about 15 minutes away from Ken Dorsey, the starting quarterback for Miami. Who played at Maramati High School in Orinda, California? It's also in the East Bay. And here they are in the Orange Bowl in a very important Big East battle. Dustin Pachati, the carry. Dan Morgan in on the stop. Third down now. There's a look at Ken Dorsey. Different paths for these quarterbacks. Dorsey was highly recruited out of high school. Well, Terman went from high school to junior college and had a great junior college career. Third down. Here comes the blitz. Terman. Picked off. It's intercepted. Philip Buchanan. He's 20. He's in. Touchdown, Miami. It's the sixth time this year Miami has taken an interception back for a touchdown.
Buchanan and I think a few of his mates were flagged for celebration. And that's part of that Miami swagger that you talked about earlier, Rich. These guys are talented. We went into the end zone, dancing into the end zone. That's going to make a long point after kick. This is a Miami team that just has so much speed on all sides of the field, and that's why they return these interceptions for touchdowns. That's the 11th non-offensive touchdown. And you know what? It cost them a point. Butch Davis is not happy about that. The Miami Hurricanes have come up big on defense again. And Miami, number two in the country, on the board first against Pittsburgh. Six nothing, number two Miami on top of Pittsburgh. And for the Panthers, a disastrous screenplay, which turned into six points. And it was really a scramble by Turbin. See, he can't see the, the, the corner right now, Buchanan, because he's shaded by the pass rush. So Buchanan comes literally out of nowhere for Turbin. And you don't think Miami wants this game. You don't think they want to prove something to the people at the BCS. Look at Damian Lewis, 92 right there, no helmet. What's he do? He goes down the field and makes a block for Buchanan. That's a great hustle by the headless defensive lineman. Well, helmetless at least. <laughs> There's a look at Terman. John Terman was pulled from last week's game, but it had nothing to do with his performance. He's diabetic and he was sick most of the week going into North Carolina. He had to take IVs at halftime. And Walt Harris felt that he just wasn't right physically. That's Rod Rutherford, who is the backup quarterback, who turns the kick out to the 19. Rich Anderson comes, excuse me, Damian Lewis comes from the other side of the field. Just a tremendous hustle by this kid. First and 10 for the 18. Barlow. Runs into Morgan at the 21 yard line. Which that time Pittsburgh went to board wide receiver set and then ran ball up the middle. They're trying to mix things up and give Miami different looks offensively. Where they're going to win is if they stay in their basic set and execute. They had some opportunities in that first drive, they have to execute. That's what that guy does best. Dan Morgan. Lou Poli. Now to the 24 yard line. Dan Morgan has made a lot of tackles in his career. And with that tackle, he has just passed George Myra Jr. for first all time. In Miami history. He is a Buckus Award finalist. Keith Adams of Clemson, Rocky Thomas of Oklahoma are the other finalists. Third down. Terman caught at the 40 yard line. Lamar Slade. 15 yard pickup. First down, Panthers. And with this wide spread out offense that Pittsburgh's given them, it's giving 
the Pittsburgh wide receivers zone coverage in the secondary. That's a switch route. It's an old run and shoot play where the receivers just switch on the motion when they're in the trips formation or the twins formation. Whatever happened to the run and shoot? Oh, they put up a lot of points, but people figured out they can't run the ball against it or with it. So they threw it out. Turn with a quick throw, and it's dropped. Lamar Slades couldn't hold it. Second down, 10. Look out. Turman was hit, but he got the throw away. And Latif Grimm made the catch. First down, Pittsburgh. You know, with the exception of the interception, but Turman, he has been very accurate with the football. He's had two drops so far, but he's been very accurate with the football. And they're spreading Miami out right now offensively. Mike Rumpf putting on the pressure. <laughs> on first down to the 44 yard line. RJ English. Who has rotated all year long with the starting two wide receivers is out for this game. That's why we've seen Lamar Slade in there. Barlow goes nowhere. Right now, Pittsburgh can't run the football. Damian Lewis made the stop. A torn ACL. He's out for the season. Pittsburgh is not real deep. When you rebuild a program, it takes you four, five, six years to, to build that depth up. And they are going to miss RJ English today as they try to spread Miami defense out. They've already used four wide receivers on a number of occasions. So that loss of RJ English is going to first cost them and hurt them later in this ball game. Quiet day for Bryant so far. One catch, one drop. Terman. Bryant, and the ball may have been tipped. Or else Terman just threw a duck. And it's incomplete. Fourth down, Pittsburgh. Donnie, what happened there? Well, Terman has got to keep his feet underneath him and follow through on the throw. I'm not quite sure what Walt Harris is talking to him about, but you see so many men coming. It's man coverage down the field. It may have gotten tipped. I don't think he just followed through on the football and just pulled the string on it. Santana Moss. And Pittsburgh will cover it inside the three yard line. Good special teams work by the Panthers and a nice punt by Andy Lee. 43 yards. 6 0 Miami. Mid November, and this sure doesn't feel like college football. Close to 80 degrees right now. 6 0. Number two, Miami on top of Pitt. Jackson outside. To the eight yard line. And that's where that run will end. John, I think if you're if you're looking for an upset in this ball game, there are some signs. Pittsburgh's offense has had open receivers, they've had drop balls, and they stopped Miami's offense on that first series. There are some promising signs for Pittsburgh. You're exactly right. The receivers have been running open. It looks like the Miami secondary is having a little bit of problems with all the different sets that's thrown at them. Jackson to the 11. And it will bring up third down and about two. Let's check in with Holly Rowe. The offensive coordinator for Miami, Larry Coker, has been around some pretty good backs. Barry Sanders at Oklahoma State, Eddie George at Ohio State, and Edger and James here at Miami. He made a tape the last couple of weeks for James ja Johnson and said, this is how these guys finish the run. He said that's the thing that they have done the best in their career. And so he wants Jackson to keep pumping those legs hard at the end of the run. He's done that on his last two carries. And Holly, I think Jackson wants to be included on that tape in about three or four years when Coker shows it to his next running back. This one ends up about the 13 yard line. Brian Beinecke made the stop. And Miami may be short of the first down here. I think they are short. And this is, a, again, you mentioned the Pittsburgh defense stepping up. This is an impressive stop so far. 
Here's a look at James Jackson, a senior out of Belle Glade, Florida. And the Hurricane punt team comes on. So Pittsburgh defense should get the ball back in, in a good spot. Now flags go down, movement up front. With that quick change, you're probably going to get a procedure penalty against Miami. Dead ball, ball start on the offense. Five yard penalty from the line of scrimmage. Repeat the down. And Butch Davis is acting about the deking when, when players are not allowed, defensive players are not allowed to give a false move that's designed to pull people offside. Cap shot. Whoa, just got it away. No flags. This is Antonio Bryant, and he goes down at the 42-yard line. Pittsburgh will have it at their own 42. In the Orange Bowl, looking for an upset. 57 yards on the kick, no flag. The swagger is back, so to speak. 6-0, number two Miami on top of Pitt. I've never seen cheerleaders wearing shades. They're cool only, cheerleaders. Only in Miami. Ken Dorsey on the bench because Pittsburgh has the ball now. John Terman takes over. A little lead option. Barlow. That's the best running play that the Panthers have had today. And he's out close to midfield. Seven yard pickup. Barlow is a guy they'll throw the ball to. And he's averaging 81 yards per game on the ground. The man that has the big play today, Philip Buchanan, made the stop. And I love these games in November when coaches pull out all the stops. John Terman running the option. This is something they only do in November. Terman at 6'4", 220. A look at Barlow. He's had a good year. And now hand it to the big fullback, Dustin Pachati. To the 49, he'll lose a yard. Miami is good against the run and good against the pass. And you look at Morgan right there, only 113 yards a game on the ground, and there's a big reason why 44. And I'm very surprised that Pittsburgh right now is running the ball as much as they've had. They've had people open in the pass game. Third down, Terman caught. He had a man wide open and a big bruising hit by Chris Wilson after the catch. Pittsburgh has had men open consistently here in the first quarter, Don McPherson. That four wide out set, and that time it was Wilson, the backup tight end, out in the flex position, has given Miami fits. Wilson will come in from the left side of the screen. Great protection by the offensive line for Pitt. No one within yards of Wilson. Trust me, the defensive coaches right now upstairs from, from Miami are going nuts. Terminate quick throw and a catch at the 28 yard line. Antonio Bryant made this the catch his second of the day. Barlow on a draw goes nowhere. Dan Morgan with yet another stop. He's in on just about every stop the Hurricanes make. And the Hurricane defense has Miami on top. Number two Miami leads Pitt 6-0. David, you have one of the worst cavities I have ever seen. Okay. Have a good day. Aren't you gonna fix it? Well, I'm not a dentist. I'm a dental monitor. I just tell you when you have a bad cavity. It's bad. Lunch? Oh, yes. Where are you going? Why monitor a problem if you don't fix it? That's why free credit monitoring isn't enough to protect you. At LifeLock, we not only alert you to identity threats. If you have a problem, we'll spend up to a million dollars on lawyers and experts who work to fix it. LifeLock. Trust 60 days risk-free using promo code CAVITY. You have cancer. There's nothing you can do to prepare yourself. 
Round one of chemotherapy. I'm gonna fight it, I'm gonna survive. There's no way I'm gonna let this take over me. Cancer doesn't care what you look like, who you are. It may not save my life. It may save my children's lives. It may save someone you love. Great, it just can't care about you. Let's do it. Live. Fight like hell. And when you get too tired to fight, let somebody else fight for you. Because of all the donations, mine is one of the lives that's been saved. One, two, three. Never give up. Don't give up. Don't ever give up. NBA Playoffs starts Saturday on ESPN and ABC. Number two Miami on top of Pittsburgh as we start the second quarter, 6-0 downtown Miami. Isn't that convenient? The national championship will be not right here in the Orange Bowl, but up at Joe Robbie in the Orange Bowl. Third down and six. And the blitz is on the way. Terman to the sidelines. It's caught at the 21. And the officials say catch. Lamar Slade, the sophomore out of Yorktown, Virginia, in front of Mike Rumpf. And Slade did exactly what you're supposed to do on a close call, Rich. Stand up and stop politicking. Sell it. That's, now, right. th that's a bad word in this, yeah, I guess in this right. area, Don. Don't say that. <laughs> Rump, nice break on the ball by Rump. And Slade protects it with his body. That's a smart play by Slade to fall in and protect the football with his body. And the Panthers have driven to the Miami 21 on first down. Terman over the middle. Caught by Latif Grimm. And he's close to the first down. Edward Reed made the stop, and Terman took another hit. Right now, Pittsburgh on the move. First and goal just inside the 10. John Terman. Quick throw and another catch at the four, Latif Grimm. And now Terman's receivers are starting to catch the ball. And, and you know what? The Miami defensive secondary is giving them a lot of room. I'm surprised down here inside the 20 yard line. Walt Harris's offense, you see he's throwing, starting to throw that ball a lot more. Get rid of those run plays, Walt. Throw the football. You're doing well with it. Second and goal. Terman's five of five on this drive. Scrambling. In trouble. And goes down to the four. Jamal Green. The sophomore out of Camden, New Jersey, made the stop. And so Pitt is faced with third down and goal. David Priestley, number 11. Rob Rutherford, number 12, surrounding Harris. Third down and goal. Terman. Caught, touchdown, Chris Wilson. And Pittsburgh ties the game. And John Terman has come back from that interception and very cool and methodically goes down the football field. Nothing fancy, throwing the ball accurately down the field. Remember, Miami missed an extra point, which was actually about a 42 yard extra point because of the taunting call after their touchdown. So Pittsburgh with an opportunity to take the lead. And they do. 
Nick Lotz adds the points. Butch Davis and the number two Miami Hurricanes at home, but down by a point. Pittsburgh on top. Back in Miami where Pittsburgh leads Miami 7-6 and here's the reason why here's Wilson the tight end he's one on one with a defensive back Reed Reed does not challenge Wilson and he gives Wilson a simple little out route wide open for the touchdown the Miami secondary needs to be more aggressive especially down inside the five yard line Chris Wilson his second touchdown of the year and so the Panthers have a 7-6 lead. Daryl Jones. Jones. Out to the 32 yard line. And Miami. We have it on first and 10. We check in with Holly Rowe. Guys, we asked the coaches yesterday if being number two in the country has given Miami its swagger back. The coaches said the older players have done a nice job keeping the younger players humble. But the last two drives down the field, I'm seeing a lot of talking. The secondary for Miami taunting the receivers of Pittsburgh. They started making big plays. Maybe they need a little more humility right now. They could have used it on that interception return. It cost them a point. Dorsey. Nice catch. Jeremy Shockey, the tight end, right near midfield. And a good throw on the move by the sophomore quarterback. Shockey's a tight end, they say, is a wide receiver imitating, impersonating a tight end. He's a lot like Kevin Wilson for Pittsburgh. He's not that big of a guy, runs great routes, and has tremendous hands. A step or two from a big one. Second and four. Dorsey, a quick throw. Caught by Moss. To the 32. William Ferguson made the stop. And Moss finally gets a touch. Rich, we did a lot of talking about these wide receivers on both sides of the football. Both of these teams have great receivers. And the Pittsburgh secondary has given Moss so much room, so much respect. They can't take that chance. He has the ability in the open field to make it pass. A look at Moss. Paul Rhodes, the defensive coordinator for Pitt, told us we have to keep Moss in front of us. But that doesn't keep him from making big plays. Jackson out of bounds. Yeah. Second day was lined up about 25 yards off the ball. <laughs> That'll <laughs> he, do it. He was in front of them. Surprised they can see him from how deep they were. Pitt has had some close calls this year. The three point loss on the road to Virginia Tech. Michael Vick played almost exactly a half of that game. He came out with a few seconds left in the first half. And Virginia Tech won on a late field goal. Dorsey unloads and it's incomplete. Najee Davenport couldn't hold on. And Pitt's going to take their chances with blitzes and pressures. That time they brought Williams off the corner. The outside linebacker and put him right in Dorsey's face and didn't allow him to set his feet. And get his pass off. So it's third down and nine. One of three today. Just about in field goal range. Lots of time for Dorsey. A bullet, flags follow. Reggie Wayne was the intended receiver. And he went down in a heap. And you're going to get Ferguson in the corner going over the top of Reggie Wayne. Pretty good coverage by Ferguson. 
but that's the penalty right there. He didn't anticipate Reggie Wayne making the break when he did. These Miami receivers will take the route deeper than most wideouts. Miami has been known for this over the years of their receivers going four, maybe five yards deeper than most teams where they break their route off. That time, Reggie Wayne cut it off a little bit soon, and Ferguson was all over his back. What does that do to a defensive back? It drives them crazy because they're used to teams and receivers breaking at 12 or 15 yards. Miami will go to 18 yards or even 22 yards before they break their routes. Jackson. Down to the 12. It's a big first down for the Hurricanes. Mark Punko in on the stop. Second down. Dorsey, Davenport, five, out of bounds. Has the first down, it's first and goal, Miami. Both of these secondaries are young. Here again, Williams, number 34 at the corner, forcing him to throw hot and then miss tackles. Pittsburgh cannot afford these kind of mistakes defensively. You have a chance to stop not Davenport, not to Davenport, and not allow him to get the first down. Jackson did not get in. Rich, this is an impressive drive for the Pittsburgh defense. Let me tell you why. They are forcing Miami to go down the field methodically. Miami does not take a long time to score. They are a quick strike team, and right now Pitt is forcing them to go down the field methodically, something they're not, they're not used to. Miami may score here, but Pitt can take something out of this. Dorsey straight ahead, he's in. Touchdown, Miami. And now the Hurricanes. Well, Donnie, do you go for two right now, or do you just you kick it and figure you're going to get a few more scores after this? Well, I tell you, given the way that both of these teams have played, I would go for two. Because it, it could come down that this team, this game is a close game, and that one point will make a difference. But maybe in Butch Davis's reasoning, two points isn't as assured as the one, and so he takes the one. 13 7, Miami on top. Butch Davis and number two, Miami, a 13 7 lead. He told us yesterday, by no means are they looking past Pittsburgh. They've played extremely well. They beat Penn State, uh, you know, they, which is a big in-state rivalry for them early in the year that really kind of energized and jump-started their season. Uh, they had a great win against Boston College. And our players, uh, you know, when you play against Florida State and you play Virginia Tech and you play Washington in the schedule, you know, our players know who the really good teams are, and they have a lot of respect for Pittsburgh. A catch by Jeremy Shockey, but he was hit, fumbled the ball back. And we'll see where they spot it. The spot is important because they were looking at a first down. And they'll spot it at the 32 yard line. So it's third down and three. This is a similar area on the field where the last drive of the hurricane died. Moss on a screen. And he's short of the first down. All right, Don McPherson. Butch Davis went for it on fourth down and three instead of a 30 yard field goal. Now, right now, Miami's looking at a, a much tougher distance, about 48 yards. And, and with close to a minute and a half left in, in the half, they have to go for it. They put themselves in a hole and they have to go for it. I shouldn't say they put themselves in a hole, but I think they feel like they have to get points. And they won't be satisfied with a field goal here. Gonna put it up. Caught by Moss. 
That's quite a catch at the 27 yard line. First down, Miami. It stops the clock as they move the chains. Miami has one timeout left. Pittsburgh now has two left because they just burned one. And Walt Harris wants to give his defense a chance to catch their breath. And it's a good timeout for that very reason. Santana Moss, great speed, great moves, also great hands. That's a close call because the ball was actually underneath him. But he has his hands on it, and the ball does hit the ground. You get that hand underneath it, they're going to give you the catch. Yep. First and 10, Miami at the pit 27. Pitt's defense has some stops today. Dorsey hit and dropped. And it's going to take a while to get these receivers back, so the Hurricane going to lose some clock. That time Miami sent three receivers vertical and left Santana Moss in the flat all alone. But the pressure by Pitt was too much for Dorsey. Second and eight. Dorsey. Nice catch by Reggie Wayne. First down, Hurricane. Clock stops. Chains move. Oh, wait a minute. Now they've waved it off. And the fans will boo, but Reggie Wayne is not protesting. That tells you that he didn't catch the football. This turns into third down and almost nine. And that's a tougher one to call than the last one. It looks clearly that he goes down with it. Ah, there it went. See it? When he hit the ground, Donnie, he didn't have the ball. That's a great call by the official. Third down. And eight. Dorsey hurried. Oh, another great catch by Moss. He is having a day. First down, Miami on the move. Clock will start once they spot the ball. Well, I'd love to see receivers catch the ball with their hands like that. Dorsey will spike it. 41 seconds. Now 40 seconds. That's a it's an interesting time on the clock to spike Donnie just to stop the clock. There was plenty, there's plenty of time left from the six-yard line to run another play. You know, as a quarterback, you like a guy who's fast, you like a guy who has moves, but you love when a guy catches the ball with his hands like that. Great extension of the body by Santana Moss. You see the leg strength of this guy. He comes out of his break as fast as he goes into it. He is a nice receiver to watch. Second goal, Dorsey overthrows his man. And there's my point, Don, because spiking the ball has cost them a down. And now they're looking at third down and goal rather than take five, six seconds to get a play in and run that play. Now they could score here, and the point is moot. However, it's third down and goal from the six. Thanks. Dorsey, quick throw, caught, but not in. This is going to be fourth down and inches. What a tackle by Ferguson. Andre King made the catch, and Miami burns their final timeout of the half. I think Dorsey thought he had King in the end zone. He caught the ball in about the four. With seemingly no one around him, he's going to come in motion and cross with Shockey, and then Ferguson just comes hard. Great tackle. William Ferguson is a freshman out of Braddock, Pennsylvania. 
Miami had a similar down early in this game and they used a quarterback sneak with a big quarterback Dorsey 6'5 200 and he scored easily on the sneak. The number two team in the country the number three team in the BCS Miami facing a stubborn Pittsburgh team right now with 25 seconds left in this first half. Fourth and goal. Rich, you know I love play action pass right here, but I'm expecting Miami right now to try to go wide with James Jackson use his speed to try to get to the cone. No sneak, huh? No sneak. It's Jackson. Jumps. Is he in? No, he's not. Pittsburgh holds. What a stop for the Panthers. Unbelievable. Rich, this is the second stop for Pittsburgh. Remember, Butch Davis going for it on fourth down and not going for the field goal. They just try to go straight power football, and Pittsburgh is tough in the middle. Ursula gets him as the first one in. Comes off the corner, number 28. Mike White, Joe Conlon inside, and the Pittsburgh coach is reacting. Paul Rhodes, the defensive coordinator in his first year, has to be very proud of the way his defense has played in the first half in the Orange Bowl. Ken Dorsey lobbying for that extra yard. But it looked pretty clear on the replay that Jackson did not get in. And an injured Panther right now. Brian Beinecke, the sophomore out of Youngstown, Ohio. And he's a guy they can ill afford to lose. He's a good one. Miami went 78 yards in 12 plays, ate up six minutes of clock. And has nothing to show for it. And this Pittsburgh defense may be tired, as Holly Rose said, but they are playing tough football. And there's Beinecke, 15. He made the initial hit. And you can see Jackson never got to the end zone. And now Pitt, who was worried about keeping Miami from getting in, has to worry about getting out. Buick halftime report is coming up. The Panthers can ill afford two points, and straight ahead goes Terman, and he's out. And I think a real shot in the arm for this young Pittsburgh team to come into the Orange Bowl against number two Miami and head to halftime down by six. 13 7, number two Miami on top of Pittsburgh. Miami 13, the Pittsburgh Panthers 7 as we get set to start the second half. Rich Waltz, Don McPherson, they say, Don, to upset somebody, you got to have a lot of things go right early for your for your team. And that's what amazes me about Pittsburgh right now because they had a lot of things go wrong, yet they're still in this game only down by 6. And two fourth down plays that Pittsburgh defense held tough. Walt Harris can be very pleased with where his team sits right now. And they will get the football to begin the second half. Tory Cox takes a knee, and here are some, here's the example of, of what went wrong. At least the beginning of it. John Terman's throw was picked off by Philip Buchanan, and 72 yards later, Miami had a six-nothing lead. And this little dance into the end zone right here by Buchanan cost them. 15 yards on the point after, and that could be the difference maker. Yeah, they missed that extra point. And there's one of the two of the fourth down right there at the end of the half, and Paul Rhodes, the defensive coordinator, knows that his team is now in the hunt with big plays like that on the goal line. Pittsburgh throughout the first half had open receivers, and John Terman threw the ball pretty well. He had some drops early and some success later in the half. Barlow, he breaks loose. And Kevin Barlow is out. Lost the ball. Barlow lost the football. Miami says they've got it. 
and they do. Well, we just got finished talking about those missed opportunities for Pitt that time. Kevin Barlow made an outstanding run of 40 people in the backfield. And look who comes up with it. Dan Morgan at the bottom of the pile, and Walt Harris is not was obviously not happy. And it was a tremendous effort by Barlow, but right now he's got to tuck the football away. And Rumpf gets a good pop right on the football and knocks it out. Number eight, Rumpf coming in right there, gets a pop right on the ball. Three Pittsburgh turnovers. Ken Dorsey with time to the end zone. Incomplete. Santana Moss had a spectacular first half. Moss, who was all over the place, had five catches for 77 yards. Other numbers from the first half. Donnie, what jumps out at you? Well, the two turnovers by Pittsburgh, it just took opportunities away from this team. But their pass yards, their total yards, they've done a fine job of hanging in offensively with a, with a defense that they thought they were going to have more trouble with. Najee Davenport is out of the ball game with a sprained knee. And so Robert Williams is in at the fullback spot. One name we haven't talked about, Don, is D.J. Williams, the fine young true freshman fullback for Miami. He hasn't played at all. He has a, a, a right shoulder that's sore. And so James Jackson now has a third string fullback in front of him in Robert Williams. Which makes it even more curious why Miami has been running the ball so much. Maybe they believe that they can wear down the Pittsburgh defense. But I think they're going to start to throw the ball up a lot more in the second half and, put some, and try to put some more points on the board more quickly. Third down. Dorsey with time. And that's incomplete. And that was intended for James Jackson. And so Miami goes three and out. If you're thinking field goal right now, you better think about 49 50 yards and this ball could have been caught but caught but Dorsey just fires that ball those running backs don't like it when you fire the ball at them that that closely and on fourth down Miami says what the heck 50 yards 49 yards let's just go for it one of four today on fourth down fourth and ten Dorsey lots of time and they'll get the first down Ivan Mercer, the senior tight end. You know, Butch Davis is letting it fly right now with his team. I don't get the call with a fourth and nine. You go for it, but they get it. And Miami right now, their most difficult job right now is dealing with themselves. Shockey's a big play tight end coming from left to right in the screen. Excuse me, that's Mercer, the starter. He's not known for catching the football. Jackson to the 12 yard line. Amir Pirafoy made the stop. Rich, this is a ball game that Miami has to battle themselves most of all. Pitt is not Florida State. They're not Virginia Tech. When they don't come in with this big mystique and a big time game, they get you pumped up. And right now, Miami's finding themselves in a dogfight with a team that doesn't really challenge them to get in their face as much. Right now, it's all on the Miami team. Second down five. Dorsey, man wide open, touchdown Miami. It's Mercer again. And Miami's gonna go for two. Mercer's first touchdown this year. Flags down. I think someone may have had too many people on the on the field. It's not something they called up before the snap. 
illegal substitution on the defense. The penalty will be half the distance to the goal. Yeah, Mark Ponko just left the field and nobody came back. So, just by subtraction, too many men out there. <laughs> they get a whopping yard and a half. And here's the two point try. Boss in motion. Dorsey. Room to run, and he's in for the two points. Ken Dorsey to Ivan Mercer, and Miami is up by two scores, 21-7. 21-7, number two, Miami scores first here in the second half. And Sebastian, the Ibis, is a pretty happy bird right now. Close personal friend of our old partner Gino Toretta. <laughs> Where is Gino? Gino's in Fort Collins, I think. He's getting ready for Air Force and Colorado State. Tory Cox to one knee. Let's go back to that Miami score. Well, Rich, here's Mercer right here, but what's even more important is the flow you're going to see by a great ball fake by Dorsey, the quarterback. Watch the full flow. As Mercer just comes right back across with no one anywhere near him, someone blew a coverage. And we've been talking about Dorsey and his poise. Right now, he sees he's got room to run. He's only got a yard to get in. Smart move by Dorsey, pulling him down and making that decision. You know, he's just like Toretta in a sense that he's a Northern California kid. He grew up probably 20 minutes from where Toretta did in Pinole, California. Dorsey is from Orinda, California. Barlow, who had the fumble on the last carry, is down to the 25-yard line. This is a huge series, in my mind, for Pittsburgh. And it is for this offense to get their feet back. They've given Miami an interception for a touchdown, and then the fumble by Barlow in the last series. This is, you're right, an important series for them to get back in. Walt Harris has worked with some great quarterbacks in this day. Terman, his receiver went down. Terman had to scramble and he makes the play. Bryant makes a catch out at the 40 yard line. Al Blades, who's been the constant companion for Bryant, made the stop. Antonio Bryant playing in his hometown. Northwestern High School was not recruited by Miami last year. He said he wanted to have a big game. But he put too much pressure on himself. He said and give Terman a lot of credit for throwing his ball over the middle of the field and finding his man Bryant because he's thrown two picks already. It was a dangerous throw across his body. But a great throw. 17 yards on the pickup. Only the third catch for Bryant today. And Pittsburgh keeps it on the ground out to the 45. Dan Morgan made the stop. Pittsburgh managed to give different looks up front in the first half. Spreading them out with four wide receivers and flexing the tight end and then running the ball in the middle. They've been more productive so far on just a few carries by Bala in the run game. Wilson in motion. Terman doesn't like what he sees. He'll take a timeout. 21 7, Miami on top of Pittsburgh. Back after this. Welcome back to Miami. 21 7, the number two team in the country. At least in the polls, in the BCS, Miami, of course, number three by percentage points. John Turner. All day to throw. Brian is open. Can't make the catch. It was in his hands. And it's the second ball. He's dropped. 
Nice throw by Terman, third down and seven. Holly Rowe talked about these guys in the secondary, John back and forth with Bryant. He knows that he has to win these battles. He knows he's not going to get those opportunities. He throws the hands up. I'm going deep. Ball goes right through his hands. He has to make that catch. Four of nine on third downs today. Terman in trouble. Scrambling, throwing. It's dropped again by Bryant. Terman may have been across the line of scrimmage. Terman was way across the line of scrimmage. I thought he was going to tuck and run. And what you got to think that the Miami secondary is in the ear of Antonio Bryant. They're not just in his ear, Donnie. They're in his head. Yeah, exactly right. That is his third drop of the day. And although it, it's a costly one because of, obviously it doesn't count because of the, the penalty. It's in his own head now. He's had three drops and three big drops. It's a loss of down penalty. So Pittsburgh is going to have to punt. And this ball is right in his hands. That's the second, actually the third pass that's going right in and out of the hands of Antonio Bryant. Andy Lee to punt and the ever dangerous Santana Moss back to receive. Lee gets off a good one. Moss to the 25 yard line. Moss returns the ball. Nine yards on the return. Miami ball. Their own 26. Reggie Wayne on sort of a reverse. We were in Wisconsin last uh, week, Reese, and those the Wisconsin coaches are very high on Sorgi. They think that Sorgi is a would be a starting quarterback in a lot of other places in the Big Ten. Clinton Portis with the carry, and he's out across the 30 to the 32 yard line. Brian Knight, the junior, in pursuit. And Brian Knight was the one who made the, the play, the last play on the reverse to King. He's showing a tremendous amount of speed and quickness coming down the line and chasing, chasing plays. On third and four, quick throw. Oh. Oh. How would you like to be a quarterback with these receivers? Reggie Wayne. Talked about the hands earlier of Santana Moss. This time, Reggie Wayne pulls a page out of that same book with great extension and hands on this catch. Just caught the end of the ball. It's impressive. Portis straight ahead. And Clinton Portis is out to the 46. To gain of seven, Ryan Gonzalez made the stop. Clinton Portis is a guy we weren't expecting to see today. We weren't sure if he was going to play or not. He's not even listed in the 2D. But he's had a few big games for them. In his career. He was a freshman All-American last year. They've got James Jackson. We've seen him most of the day. They've lost Najee Davenport, a fullback. DJ Williams has not played for Miami. This is Portis out to midfield. He's got a first down. Donnie, Miami leads this game 21 to 7. In the big, uh, the biggest of the big pictures, the BCS picture. Should Miami win this game by, say, 14 points, 20 points, does that hurt them in the BCS? Do they need to blow Pittsburgh out right now? According to the computer, they need to blow people out, but Butch Davis will not do it. He doesn't think that that's what his team is all about. He's going to play it straight. It will hurt them in the computers, but I don't think it will hurt them in the popular vote. 
problem is they're trailing in the electoral college. Dorsey's throw, another catch by Wayne. Wayne out the 32-yard line, 19 yards on the pickup. There's your scoring margin. Miami has a better scoring margin than Florida State, though that probably will change today. Florida State has what, Wake Forest today? Wake Forest. They're only a 50-point favorite. They have two different coaching <laughs> personalities and styles here. You see the, the disparity. Yeah. They're flip-flop from the polls of the BCS. Dorsey throws short, caught by Wayne, spins away from one. Wayne down to the 10-yard line. First down, Miami. Miami's just starting to take over this ball game now. They've got their run game going with Portis. And they're being more methodical in the pass game. Well, Reese Davis talked earlier. You don't see the spin move very much, but watch Reggie Wayne. In the open field, a quick little juke. And he's gone. First and 10 for the 12. Dorsey, Moss is open. Dorsey, incomplete. Santana Moss was doing everything he could in the back of the end zone. To, Santana to get Moss, Dorsey's attention. He came across the field, I think, he probably got across the field too fast. He came across the field like a shot. And by the time Dorsey got his head around, Moss was already in the corner of the end zone. He's saying, why not me? See, I'm here. Dorsey doesn't miss much. Man open, Robert Williams. And he's dropped. Boy, Tory Cox made the stop. And this is going to bring up third down. You know, Pitt was concerned with their secondary going up against a high power offense, but I tell you, I am impressed with how well the Pittsburgh secondary has been tackling in the open field. This Panther defense has been on the field an awful long time here in this third quarter. You can see them puffing and puffing. Dorsey. Caught. Touchdown. Reggie Wayne. Put your eyes on Santana Moss. Reggie Wayne steps up big, and he certainly did in that last drive. Extra point is good. And Miami, a 13-7 halftime lead, has been stretched. 28-7, Reggie Wayne from Ken Dorsey. Pittsburgh has to get up off the mat, or they may just stay down. Nick Goins out to the 35-yard line. Earlier I said Pittsburgh's defense was forcing Miami, Miami to some long drives, and that was good for the Pittsburgh defense. At this point in the ballgame, it's great for the Miami offense, and they're proving that they're not just a big, quick strike team, that they can put long drives together and go down the field and march down the field on people. And obviously the Pittsburgh defense could use some help in the Pittsburgh offense. Going to the 34-yard line, Dan Morgan made another stop. Three men are the Buckus finalists. We told you about it earlier. Keith Adams of Clemson, Rocky Kalmus of Oklahoma. Miami never has won the Buckus. 
And Morgan said that's unreal. Just look at the, the, the caliber of linebackers they've had here at Miami. They put together a string of some outstanding defensive players. You know, those guys play behind people like Warren Sapp and some other fine defensive linemen. It feels the way for these guys to make some tackles. Third down. Turman deflected and incomplete. Mike Rump broke it up. Antonio Bryant, I don't think, ever touched it. And you can just feel Miami's momentum right now. Starting to put the screws in. Andy Lee to punt it away. Santana Moss is waiting. In traffic, Moss is out to the 43. Down below, Holly Row. Guys, Dan Morgan broke an unbelievable record that stood for 13 years, and here's the man whose record it was, George Meyer Jr. You said you hadn't thought about the record in 13 years till last night, and you broke it down. Yeah, I hadn't really thought about it. Uh, I was at work last night, and a couple of guys were talking about it, and, you know, I sat down, I said, you know, God, yeah, that's a heck of a lot of tackles, and, you know, I had 490, and I broke it down to 130 a year for four years. You couldn't miss a game or get hurt, and you had to be there every game, and, and even Joe Rose told me today that it was a phenomenal record. Well, you give Dan some grief because you said it even missing a game, but you keep pushing him to do better himself. Oh, yeah, I, I give him a little tease. I said, you know, I missed a game. You know, you started uh, more games than I did, but I keep driving and telling him, look, you got to keep going and pushing. And he's done well, and I congratulate him on the sideline. And I think he's played one of the best games he's played this year. They moved down from outside linebacker to inside this year, which is a rare move for kids to succeed at, but you think he's made the adjustment. Yeah, he's done very well. You know, the rule is, you know, an inside guy can go outside, but an outside guy can't come inside. But Dan has proven him wrong, and he's done it, and he's doing a, an exceptionally good job this year. Well, thanks very much for your time. Thank you. Rich. Thanks, Holly. George Myra Jr., of course, his father was the... Uh, Great quarterback here. And Dan Morgan setting the tackle record today. I, I thought they left those camouflage. I, th I thought they left that back in the 80s, the, the hurricane. There's a look at the number that's been retired. Where's Toretta's number? Dorsey's throw is dropped. Robert Williams dropped it. Where's Gino's number? It's got to get up there soon. Gino Toretta is, is the most decorated, not just college football player here at Miami, the most decorated college athlete of all time. Yep, Otis Anderson, and Burgess Owens, Vinny Testaverde. They just retired Bernie Kosar's number here. The Mad Stork. Why wasn't he called the Mad Ibis? Dorsey's throw is incomplete. And it's third down and ten for Miami. There's a look at Kozar. Hendricks wore 89 when he was here. Jim Dooley. A lot of history and heritage in this stadium. I think Dorsey is kind of really fits that mold of a, the Jim Kellys, the Testaverde, the Kozar, the Toretta's, the Craig Erickson, Steve Walsh, the big quarterback that's had success. A wobbly pass is incomplete. And Miami will have to punt. All right, time now for our Aflac trivia question. Cue the duck. Miami quarterback Gino Toretta won the 92 Heisman Trophy. Which running back finished second in the 92 race? That's a touchback. It's a nice, it's a nice effort. Nice effort by Andre Johnson, but it's coming out to the 20-yard line. And I'm stymied by the question. 
1992 running back that finished second in the Heisman. Oh, just missed it. Great play, great effort. Let's go. You heard the coaches calling great effort, great effort. That's all you want from your team. Especially when you're up 21. You have a hit for me? You know, I don't know the answer. I'm, I'm, I'm stymied as you are. You're killing me. Determined. It's dropped. And it's incomplete. And that ball's caught by Lou Poli. And Lou Poli with a few of his friends make their way out to the 27 yard line. It's, uh, Donnie, I've been back to Marshall to do three games, the MAC championship the last three years. And it's amazing that when you go back there, still, there is that air and that, I don't want to say uneasiness, but it's, a, it's an aura about that program and about that accident and about that team that, that still remains. There are members that, that were around that team, that were on that team, that were not on that plane, that have never gone back to that stadium. And will not go back to that stadium still to this day. Terman, a completion to Latif Grimm out to the 35-yard line. It's an eight-yard pickup. Pitt trying to move the ball down 28-7 here in the Orange Bowl. And that is a big completion for Terman in what has been otherwise a, a dismal second half so far. A few drops, uh, especially from the, the big guy, Antonio Bryant. A fumble by Barlow. Another completion, Barlow the catch, and the Hurricanes swarm, and be short of the first down. Aflac trivia answer, the question was, our own buddy Gino Toretto won the Heisman in 92. Which running back finished second? And the answer is? Uh, uh, Marshall, Marshall Fall. Fall. That's a good question. That's a Susie Hinsdale special. <laughs> Marshall Falk. I didn't think he was that old. It's Susie's job every week to come up with those questions. Dan Morgan and the Miami defense has played well today. Barlow, who is gang tackled, is slow to get up. And this is the time in the ball game when this Miami team knows that teams come down here from up north in the heat and they start to wear down. They start to apply a little more pressure defensively. Second down, six. Terman. Caught at the 36. Actually dropped. The ball hit the ground first. That last pass was incomplete. Third down and six. Terman's going down. Dropped at the 36. Like I said, Miami steps up their game at this point in the ball game, going into the fourth quarter with the lead. Miami is tough. Quincy Hips, the senior out of Tampa with the sack. And Hips is one-on-one -on -one with a back, and he's going to win that battle every time. Pitt worst in the Big East and giving up sacks. 32 coming into play, and that's the first today. Give Santana Moss enough times, or enough tries. Moss is out to the 37-yard line. It's one of the things Pittsburgh's done well today. Moss hasn't hurt him on the return game. 
Pittsburgh's been very good in the special teams game. Where they've hurt themselves have been on turnovers and drops, and those two elements right there have cost Pittsburgh this this ball game so far. Donnie, do style points help in the BCS? Because the, I don't think Miami, will, at, at this point in the game, through these three quarters, I don't, I don't think they're going to get many style points for this one. No, they won't get style points. And again, the computer knows nothing about style, but I'm impressed with how they've played this ball game. They, they took some chances early, trying to make some things happen. And now. And now, James this. Jackson is loose. And now their one game is picking up. James Jackson wasn't getting that kind of freedom in the first half. And now, because of their methodic play through three quarters, they're starting to get their run game going. 24 yards on the carry. And Jackson does most of this himself. He cuts inside. He's got blocks to his side. And then he has that speed to bounce it outside. With all the pounding they've been doing on the inside and not getting much. Pittsburgh's defense is a little worn down. I'd say a lot worn down right now. Gary Urschler made the stop on James Jackson. Oklahoma trailing right now so in the BCS picture so much of the focus here in Florida has been on Florida State and Miami and the hurricane don't have anything to worry about if Oklahoma gets beat today at least for a week <laughs> rest of the way from Miami in the Big East one advantage the hurricane have they do not have a conference championship game. So if they beat Pittsburgh today, and it looks like they will, if they win at Syracuse and then beat Boston College, it looks like they've got an outstanding shot at being one or two in that BCS. If you're in a, the SEC or the Big 12, Don, that, that extra game can hurt you, I think, a lot more than it can help you in terms of the BCS. Absolutely. That, oh. Hopefully it'd be great to see that Nebraska Oklahoma rematch will definitely be a key. Number two Miami has stretched their lead. Reggie Wayne's having a day. 28-7 Hurricane. I don't know that uh, Miami's finest would be needed to keep the crowd off the field after this one. It's kind of a disappointing turnout here at the Orange Bowl for the number two team in the country. Dorsey. Moss. Look out, 10, and out of bounds. <laughs> 23 yards <laughs> on the catch and the run. This guy has acceleration. <laughs> Goodness gracious. He makes a move. He comes out of this. He's standing still. Watch him spin and go. Oh, my goodness. How much you can do against that? That's not a Cajun term. <laughs> no, it's not Cajun. Uh -huh. It's acceleration. First and goal for Miami. Pittsburgh seven. Jackson is in. Touchdown. The route is on. Bring on the computers. <laughs> Ali Rowe talked earlier about James Jackson finishing runs, and it's exactly what he's done in this drive. Showing great vision in the middle of the field. Gary Urschler, who has played a pretty good ball game, the sophomore safety. Pittsburgh, of course, lost their great tackler, Ramon Walker, with a knee injury. Corey Humphreys has been banged up. Tory Cox. Gary Urschler, William Ferguson, all having to play in the secondary. Talking about James Jackson, just watch his vision. Watch where he, he starts to play, starts to the left, 
and he goes all the way back across and sees that seam as he straightens and squares his shoulders up the field. That's what Holly Rowe was talking about earlier in finishing plays. And this is just adding injury to insult. When they're over 31, they've won 100 straight. And you might look at that stat and you'd say, duh. <laughs> but you know what? In modern day college football, you look at the Northwestern Michigan game as an example. 45 to 40 games all of a sudden are not that uncommon. The Hurricane, number two in the country, number one in the Orange Bowl right now, 35 7. Another great day for that young quarterback, Ken Dorsey. The sophomore has number two Miami on top of Pittsburgh, 35 7. Rich Waltz, Don McPherson, Holly Rowe in the Orange Bowl. Deep kick rolls through the end zone. 56 yards on the kick off the right foot of Freddie Capshaw. Our Cisco Systems player of the game. Dorsey now as a starter is 11 and 1, has thrown for 28 touchdowns and five interceptions. And you mentioned him amongst those names of Toretta and Kozar and the other great quarterbacks who have played here in Miami. He is well on his way to playing that type of football. He was not recruited by the Cal Golden Bears. They had Kyle Baller and a good quarterback in their own right. But he grew up about 15 minutes from the Cal campus. Rutherford. Rutherford out to the 34 yard line. Out to the 37 yard line. Donnie, let's talk more about the BCS. And I think you were probably referencing a team like Purdue in a sense that a lot of the luster of their season has taken off just by the fact that they're not in this, the, the, the final three or four teams in the BCS element when we get to the last month. Here's the scoring breakdown. You take the poll average, the coaches on the left, the riders on the right, then the computer average. They've added four computers, so there's eight this year. Schedule strength is mixed in, and then number of losses. Add it all together, and the lowest number is number one. The next lowest is number two. Rock the first, overthrows. And it's incomplete. So how is Florida State ranked ahead of Miami? Don? Well, you're figuring this out for me. I'm a former player. I don't get it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> There's the strength of schedule. Miami right. has a strength of schedule. And the remaining opponent's record. Now, remember, Wake Forest is one opponent, and then Florida is the other opponent for the uh, Seminoles. And I joke saying I'm a former player and I don't get it is that most players don't get it. They go out and they play football each week. You know, it, it occurs to me that the only difference between the confusion we used to have in the polls and the confusion we have now with the BCS is the BCS is sponsored. <laughs> and there's more elements, there's more numbers to look at. You can quantify them, you can look, point to this number, point to that number. Where it used to be in the old polls, there was just a lot of, there, there was a little more mystery. Now there seems to be a little more confusion. And, and the, the one thing that I, I've heard, especially coming out of Miami this week, is that the polls don't recognize heart. They don't recognize the effort of the team or what goes on in the course of a ball game. They just look at the numbers. And I think that's what frustrates players. Daryl Jones for Miami. Hogtied at the 36 yard line. Last week they had, what, 79,000 here in the old Orange Bowl. And they don't play the Orange Bowl here anymore. It's up at the Joe Rock, or what, pro players, excuse me. 
600 media credentials last week for Virginia Tech and Miami. You know, Gino Toretta talked about this a lot with Miami not drawing a lot of fans. And this is really, you know, I don't understand how teams making a run for a national championship and you only get 47,000 people. And I doubt there's 47 here. It, I don't I don't see 47. And, and they had 77 for Florida State and more than 75 last week for Virginia Tech. And here's the team. Are they supporting the team? Are they coming to watch? You know, who's coming in from out of town? Jason Gathers, uh, Boca Raton. And that, that's part of the what Miami is. It's a city of attractions, and if there's a good team coming in town to play, then the people come out to the game. There's your attendance, 47-5-2-0, if you're scoring with us at home. I don't think number two Miami has hurt themselves in either the poll or the BCS today. I think they, it's been a, an impressive showing. Again, the numbers might not look like they won as big as, as they would have, would have expected to win. But if you look at the whole ball game, they've been they played consistently all game long. They've done it in all aspects of the game. The big players stepped up, Santana Moss and Reggie Wayne stepped up and had great games. And Walt Harris and the Panthers still need another win to get to a bowl game. Butch Davis and the Hurricanes, number two in the country, number three in the BCS. They could move up. 35-7 is your final score. For Holly Rowe and Don McPherson, I'm Rich Waltz. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. You're home for college football on the Internet, 35-7.